Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for September 11th, 2021, around 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for several storms to be forming in the tropical Atlantic during the next several days and a look at a storm that may impact Texas during the next several days. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we can notice that we have a lot of action going on currently. We have Invest Area 94L over here. A new tropical disturbance that has not yet been tagged, but this is the wave here that will be moving into the Bahamas during the next several days and has a low chance of developing. We also have Invest Area 93L and what will soon probably be Invest Area 95L with a 20% chance of developing as this wave uh, over Africa comes off here and eventually should make its way across the tropical Atlantic. Uh, both 93 and 94L have 80% or a 70 and 80% chance of developing over the next five days. We can see that here in the tropical weather outlook again. These are our two high probabilities, 93 and 94L over here. And we also have these two other tropical disturbances that we'll be watching for over the next several days. Our first focus is mainly going to be on the storm that is out here closest uh, to the land mass right here. This is Invest Area 94L. We can tell today that, again, the overall signature, if we kind of back this out, the overall satellite presentation uh, isn't uh, really all that impressive. But what we do notice is that there is a large area of shower and thunderstorm activity stretching all the way from just off the coast here of Florida all the way down through uh, into the Bay of Campeche and even into the eastern Pacific. This is just a long fetch here of tropical moisture uh, that is being strung over several hundred miles out here. And the thing here that we'll be kind of keeping an eye on uh, over the next several days uh, is really interesting to kind of see what exactly we're going to be dealing with. Again, right now you can kind of see uh, that in the overall field of motion, there's a little bit of cyclonic flow here indicating that, again, we kind of got some of these northerly winds here. And if you kind of look here on the southern side of this, again, you kind of have that overall envelope of just a broad circulation fetch over in this region. And again, this is going to be the one to watch as this moves northward during the next several days. Now, if we take a look here at the water vapor field here, we can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at here. Now, we have this broad upper level anticyclone over the eastern Pacific or really over Mexico right now. And this is uh, causing a lot of vertical shear that is coming from southwest to northeast around this upper level ridge that is backing away. This upper level low is backing away here, but it is bringing the shear over top here, which is one of the main inhibitors on any storm that we're going to be dealing with, uh, at least in the short term. As it continues to kind of move northward, this will still be in a modest shear environment, uh, but the shear will be weakening during the next several days as an upper level anticyclone uh, that is semi-deplaced uh, forms to the south over here with another storm that is likely going to be forming down here in the east pacific close to mexico and we could actually have a one-two punch to uh, portions of mexico here first of all rainfall on the northern and southern sides and then we could have a land falling uh, tropical system here in the eastern pacific and a uh, the potential for a land falling system in mexico or upwards of even the texas coastline here now we can see how this is represented here in the A50 millibar vorticity map. This is the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And for context here, these reds and whites, that's your higher cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. What we notice today is that again, our cyclonic spin, it's still very elongated in through here. You can kind of see this very elongated area of general cyclonic vorticity stretching from the East, East Pacific all the way through into the Bay of Campeche. And this is now the dying remnants here of what once was Hurricane Olaf out there in the East Pacific Basin. And that is one of the things that, again, we'll be watching for very closely is how this interaction in the Eastern Pacific and Gulf of Mexico takes shape here. We are also watching another invest out here. This is invest area 93L. And again, today it does look a little bit better organized. The main problem with this wave, however, if we kind of back out here, is we notice where it is in relation to the islands here, the Cabo Verde Islands, and this dry air mass to the north. Now, 
we saw this time and time again last year where tropical waves would come off at a very high latitude, get ejected northward and subjected to this dry air intrusion uh, that is coming off at the northern latitudes. And this is very typical because, again, the dry air abates in the southern part of the EMDR, but in the northern part here near the, the Cabo Verde Islands, we still get uh, those dry air entrainments uh, from time to time in these Saharan air outbreaks. And not necessarily a Saharan air event, but there is dry air. And these sea surface temperatures up in here aren't very warm, uh, so there is dry, stable air, cooler sea surface temperatures, and that is the one thing that is prohibiting this from significant development at the time. Now, we can tell that, again, there is some semblance of mid-level circulation in here, and there might be some hints at a lower-level circulation that is trying to develop somewhere within this region, uh, but it's a little bit hard to tell given the fact that, again, these uh, cloud features here are kind of obscuring the low-level cloud motions, but you can infer a little bit of cyclonic vorticity that is in here at this time, but it is probably still very elongated along a wave axis from uh, southwest to northeast, and that is very typical for waves in this kind of environment and also this kind of elongation here is very typical with a wave axis and again, it will take a little bit of time for this wave axis to rotate from uh, this to kind of a more north-south orientation. Currently, the Hurricane Center does give us a 70% chance. Now, if we look at this here, we look at both of these systems on the GFS forecast. This is the 12Z run valve for 2 p.m. this afternoon on the 850 millibar vorticity map. Again, we can kind of see here's our storm here. This is our one system there. And um, this, there is also another system right here. This is Invest Area 94L. And again, what we'll kind of be watching for is how these systems play out over the next several days. Currently, the GFS is indicating that we could have a storm forming from 94L down here in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if we take a look here at the 200 millibar wind in the upper part of the atmosphere, we notice what we were talking about earlier with this displaced upper level anticyclone. Again, part of it is going to be mainly centered down here over the Bay of Campeche. And this would be a very typical favorable environment for a storm that was centered somewhere in here. But instead, we have a storm that is actually further north. And it is catching a little bit of this jet orientation, which does help create that diffluent flow aloft, but also creates this problem where, again, there is a little bit of shear from south to kind of from southwest to northeast in that sort of orientation. Now, the storm, again, does find itself in a little bit better orientation by Tuesday. This is uh, within a relative short order, but this upper level ridging and anticyclone generally, its uh, outflow is now more semi aligned with our storm, and the storm tries to create its own outflow. Again, the anticyclone here isn't a result of the storm. It's a result of other processes in the atmosphere. It actually kind of originates from an anticyclone that is right now kind of over the uh, region here of Central America. But eventually this uh, shear does relax a little bit. We can kind of tell this here. If we take a look here at the vortex average sounding, we can see that again, the shear does relax, but there is still some shear. Again, you can kind of see you get that southeasterly flow aloft and changing to westerly flow here, uh, just about uh, really just past about 500 millibars or so, you get that change of direction in that shear. And that's why, again, there's that mid-level shear that could become a problem. And there is a little bit of dry air in the mid-levels. If we take a look here at the mid-level relative humidity, we can kind of see some of this dry air in the mid part of the atmosphere here. And again, because a cyclonic flow, because cyclonic flows around tropical cyclones in the northern hemisphere, we would get this dry air to potentially be ingested into the storm and up and around like that. So if the storm doesn't have a really well-developed inner core and is able to kind of fight off some of this dry air, the shear and just the overall background cyclonic motion may be able to kind of push uh, something of dry air, a little bit of dry air into that inner core. Eventually, though, again, this kind of moves into parts of western Louisiana. Now, yesterday we talked about how this wasn't really much of a possibility uh, or it wasn't seemingly a concern, but I am becoming a little bit more interested that this might be coming a realm of possibility. Now, we notice the storm is undergoing some pretty significant changes here in the form of rapid weakening. 
All the moisture is very well spread off to the east. We can see that again, the immediate moist pocket would probably stretch over to far eastern Louisiana and places that don't need it after Hurricane Ida, of course, uh, after Ida kind of destroyed that, that area, including Laplace, which I was in. Uh, but you can kind of see the kind of remnant moisture is all the way stretched out here through parts of Florida in the southeastern United States. Now, after that time, again, we'll be focusing our attention on another system in through here. This is a system that the National Hurricane Center did highlight. Now, we'll take a look here at, again, the 200 millibar wind at this time. Now, the upper level wind environment isn't particularly favorable. We have this big tropical upper trosopheric trough or tut, and you can kind of see these little waves in through here. This is all a tut. And again, around here, this would probably be a lot of shear. I mean, there would be a lot of shear in this environment. And what we can also tell here is that in the relative humidity, there's also some pretty dry air, especially coming on the western side here of this tut here. And you can kind of see where the outline of that generally is through here. And this would be the one thing that is also prohibiting development. But after that time, the upper level shear, we can tell will begin to sort of back away. And in much of the same sense that our storm was in earlier in the season, um, you know, we could see a storm that maybe tries to actually take off here a little bit and develop. And in the modeling, we get a storm that is modestly intensifying uh, up until landfall. And again, you know, this is going to change and all, of course, but and this is also more than five days out. But this remains a possibility that we could be seeing at least some semblance of something that tries it up. You can see here on the 850 millibar vorticity, there is some area of concern here uh, for portions really along the Carolina coastline. This is by the Hurricane Center as highlighted it. Now, we'll also be watching another wave that will be coming off in several days. Right now, this is kind of a little bit too far out in the modeling forecast, so we're not really going to be worrying about that too far yet. The Eastern, uh, or not the Eastern, the European model, however, if we go up to the 850 millibar vorticity, does develop a wave by day five where the GFS doesn't have it at day five, but it would be interesting to kind of see how it uh, does start interacting. Now, the upper level environment at this time in terms of the steering is going to depend greatly on how uh, quickly this storm intensifies and exactly where it comes off uh, initially. Again, right now, this is about 72 hours from now by about 12Z or 8 a.m. on Tuesday. We have a trough here that is digging into the Atlantic. And this creates a separation of a ridge here and a separation of the ridge here. So there's this natural weakness for a storm to be turned more towards the north. Now, again, if a storm that comes off at a more southern latitude waits a little bit longer to develop, it is possible that it tries to sneak a little bit further west before turning northward. Now, we can see that in this particular run here of the Euro that the storm actually intensifies pretty quickly and we have a series of troughs that continue to kind of dig in across the North Atlantic here. And this continuously breaks down the ridge to the north. And this ridge isn't strong enough here to force the storm generally towards almost like an Irma track here. Now, Irma it was a very interesting case. And it wasn't necessarily the ridge that turned the storm. It was actually a result of a tropical upper trosopheric trough. Now, what we can tell here is that on the, the GFS wind profile here, if we kind of go out to just about about 168 hours from now, is that again, we will kind of have this tut here. The evolution of this tropical upper tropospheric trough, assuming it's even there, is going to be very important for what ends up happening with our storm, which could be featured in Vest Area 95L. So, there's a lot of uncertainties in this overall forecast. Again, nobody is under any direct threat from this particular storm at the moment, but it is something to watch. Again, my main uh, factor right now, or, or the main player right now, is going to be whatever happens between this storm over here and, again, how the ridge builds uh, to the north of that. But, again, for immediate impacts, I will be watching Invest Area 94L for immediate impacts. Again, heavy rainfall, gusty winds. Squally conditions, those could be expected across portions of the Texas, Mexico, and portions of Louisiana uh, over the next several days. So with that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley.
I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.